Hello, my name is Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. I uh, want to continue where we left off from the last video. We were talking about energy systems. We got as far as the anaerobic energy systems. Today I want to talk about the aerobic energy system. Quick recap. Remembering that energy systems are what will resynthesize ATP, ATP being the only substance in the body that will cause a contraction. Unfortunately, we only have enough for one to two seconds of activity. So we use our energy systems to produce ATP and intensity and duration will determine which of the three energy systems we will use. We always use each one it's just a matter of which one is dominant and today we'll talk about the aerobic system which is dominant during low intensity long duration activities i hope you enjoy it finally we get on to our oxygen system or our aerobic system um, where all food food fuels can be broken down so we had anaerobic glycolysis that could only use Carbohydrates or glycogen, we have the ATPPC system, which could only use a chemical fuel called phosphocreatine. And this one, the aerobic system, uses carbohydrates, fats, and protein. But we have to have oxygen available. And the only way we can have oxygen available is by exercising at a slower rate, that is, a lower intensity. So the aerobic energy system, I've already said, low intensity, that is we need to be exercising at less than 85% heart rate max for there to be sufficient oxygen that can be supplied to the muscle. The duration for this energy system is long, but the rate is slow and it has a very high yield. That is every glycogen molecule, we can get 36 to 38 ATP. Now we can get more if we use fats and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, so sporting examples would be any long distance event like marathon, uh, road cycling, Tour de France, uh, cross country skiing. And you can see on the right hand side the formulas there. And when oxygen is available, pretty much those first three steps, glycogen, glucose, pyruvic acid, are the same as the anaerobic glycolysis system. But when oxygen is available, that unlocks a key. Um, and that unlocks the key for the chemical process to go into the mitochondria and we go through two further processes that you don't need to know they're called krebs and electron transport chain we don't need to know them but what we do need to know is that oxygen unlocks the key for those cycles to take place and then we get a whole heap more atp and you can see down the bottom 36 to 38 so i spoke said we'd come back to fuels now we can use fats and protein as well as carbohydrates now our study design says we only really need to know about anaerobic glycolysis, but we do also need to know that we can use fats and protein as part of the aerobic energy system. We call when we use fats as part of the aerobic energy system, aerobic lipolysis, that is fats are called lipids. Um, lipolysis is a breaking down of lipids. Uh, we store Lipids as triglycerides in the muscle, they're transported as free fatty acids. They are energy rich. We get an enormous amount of energy or ATP from fats, but it costs a lot of oxygen. And when we're exercising, oxygen is what we don't have. So really we use fats in a couple of instances. One, we use it at rest or at very low intensity exercise, or we use it if we've run out of carbohydrates or glycogen stores. Uh, it produces ATP at a much slower rate, so we can't exercise quickly with it. Protein's almost never used. It's really only in the case of starvation. Um, think prisoners of war and the Holocaust um, or during ultra marathon events, very, very long events where the body starts to literally eat itself. Uh, so let's have a look at a question and hopefully I've been able to give you the information where you feel that you can answer that. I'll give you some time. And if you answered A, you'd be correct. There are plenty of VCAR questions on energy systems. Over the next little while, I'm going to take you through quite, um, a, a, quite a few tutorials on energy systems. Here's one from 2017, question five. And again, if we go through back through the video, you should be able to see the answer. I'll give you some time. 
And if you had B, you'd be correct. Here's a summary um, that you might want to take down in your notes and memorize. Uh, that has all the information really that, um, that you're going to need to answer a lot of these questions. And finally, we've got a short answer question from 2016. I'll give you an opportunity to read it. So describe the similarities and differences in the process of ATP production via the aerobic and anaerobic pathways. Uh, so it's four marks. I'm thinking when well, I'm looking for two similarities and two differences, although it doesn't say that. I could go with three similarities and one difference. I could go with one similarity and three differences, but there has to be similarities and differences in the answer. So I'm looking at the difference between the aerobic pathway and the anaerobic pathway in the process of ATP production. And here's an exemplar. Uh, there are multiple answers that we could have gone, but this is a good answer. And you see that I've highlighted the words both and whereas. So both the anaerobic and aerobic energy systems um, contribute to ATP resynthesis at the beginning of exercise and produce byproducts. Now, there could be two marks in there. I'm not certain whether they're going to accept the first part of that, but certainly byproducts they will. Both systems break down glycogen for ATP resynthesis. Um, so the anaerobic glycolysis does and the aerobic energy system does. Now, the next part here where we say whereas. Um, so the anaerobic pathways synthesize ATP without oxygen, whereas the aerobic pathway requires oxygen. That whereas is really important because I'm comparing. Um, and I think you'll find people who didn't get marks here didn't use whereas. They didn't compare. The aerobic energy system has an infinite capacity or a high yield. And people would have stopped there. But we then need to say that whereas the anaerobic energy systems have a finite capacity or a low yield. Let's have a look at how people went in that 2016 event, uh, sorry, exam. And you can see that 60, 70 in fact percent got two or less. And I'll guarantee that those people forgot to use whereas when they were discussing differences. Well, thanks for watching, guys. My name's been Paul Stockdale from ABCPE. Remember, if you need any more information to access our free video tutorials, to buy summary notes, to sign up for some seminars later in the year, please go to our website, www.abcpe.com.au. We'll see you next time. Thank you.